Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching this video as always. We're going to, in part two here, work on this Cub Cadet Zero Turn that I picked up on trade that y'all saw in the previous video for a yard cart. And um, what we're going to do, we've got three main issues that we need to get sorted out. One of them is a surging issue. The uh, second one is a tire issue um, on the left front where we have a leak and bead. And the third issue is going to be a charging issue when it comes to voltage regulators, stators, how it's connected to the battery, and all that stuff. we got to do a little bit of wiring work on this thing, even more than what I did when I had this thing last year, to hopefully get this thing running and charging, um, starting running and charging reliably for whoever gets it from me. So um, that's what we're going to get into on this video. Remember, if you have any questions about this video or any other video you see on the channel, you can reach out to me at Ellis, Ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. Also, if you need parts for any small engines or whatever, I have a link at the top of the description below to the HIPAA store. If you click that link and buy parts from that their website, I get a little bit of a, a cut a little bit of commission from it so I'd appreciate it if y'all need any parts to explore and see if uh, that's something y'all would be interested in doing anyways without further ado let's get started on this Cub Cadet Zero Turn to see if we can fix the three main problems that we have going on with it alright guys the good news is I beat the rain getting it into the garage here um, I have put some gas in it. Things that I have noticed is it looks like this tire right here is rubbing against the throttle cable. And so I'm going to have to take this tire off and reroute this throttle cable somewhere in order so that it doesn't do that. I can't remember if it was the left side or the right side that seemed like it was a little difficult to move. The right side seems to be the one that's more of the problem child here. Because you can see that it's a really hard to move. And I may just need to lubricate the joints on this so that it will move better. The left side is actually pretty good. You can see it moves a lot more freely there. So I do have gas in it now. I have primed the fuel filter a little bit and I just want to see at this point if I can get this mower to start again. It hasn't started all winter I don't think. It probably hasn't started since about August or September. And, uh, so let's see what we've got here. Ooh, that was close. Flash of lightning. You'll hear the thunder in a second. Maybe not. It was a silent flash. There it is. All right, let's crank it up. charging because that was one of the issues that I was having intermittent charging issues with it too let's see
can't tell for sure. It's like 12.7 whenever it's running. Let me check the battery voltage with it static here. Yeah, 12.75, 12.76. So I don't think it is charging, unfortunately. Um, I do have. I gotta see what type of coil this is because I don't know if this is the original engine to this mower or not. But I do have a voltage regulator. That wire has come off of something. It's a that's a power wire. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that would be why. So this power wire has come off of this voltage regulator here at some point. I don't know when, but. I, like I said, I had it charging. This this was a wiring mess when I originally got it too, and so you can see a lot of splice connectors that I had to do here, and it was just it's just kind of rough. So um, I mean, what have we got? We've got a ground going here, ground going there, and then we've got the the power wire going out and obviously it's not connected so I might try and connect this to see if we can get it but I it did run better than I originally um, thought and once it stops raining maybe not today but maybe tomorrow I've got I would like to get it out here and just kind of cruise around with it a little bit so let me get some uh, let me splice some connections here and uh, see what we can manage with this thing. Like I said, this is a wiring, a little bit of a wiring mess, but if we can get it to where it will run and charge reliably, then that's the goal. And honestly, it would give somebody a pretty cheap zero turn, like under $1,000 for, for a zero turn, which is in this day and age unheard of. But I've got to figure out this whole deal with the with the uh, joysticks here too. That's what's gonna frustrate me. So, cause I want this to be good for somebody. There's a Honda without a muffler. So I'll splice these uh, wires together and see what we can manage here. All right guys, so I've got the battery now charging. I just, I, um, Splice these connectors together. I'll put some electrical tape on them just to protect them a little bit better from the elements. And uh, we're charging a little over 13 volts, so the voltage regulator is putting out what it needs to. It's probably not a high output coil, um, but you do see a little over 13 volts, so that should be enough to run PTO and all that stuff. Um, new batteries in it still. I might keep the new battery in it. I'm not sure. We'll see how the old one charges again. We've got the issue with the tire that you can see the wheel itself is rotting away, basically. So I'm going to find a wheel. This tire actually holds air, so we're good on that end. The two back tires are fairly new, honestly. Um, and the deck, like I said, the deck's in decent shape. Even though it's a Toro deck, it works great on this mower. Um, the biggest thing I've got to fix is... Um, well, I've got to see if I've got a nut big enough to get that tire off so that I can get, well, worst case, I just deflate the tire and get it, get that throttle cable out from under there. But the biggest thing i got to do is figure out what's going on with this right side self-propel. Um, uh, self-propel, I'm going to push more. Right side uh, hydro transmission because I, I just can't, can't quite figure it out. Um, I don't know what it's binding up on, so I don't know like if I need to, because like if you push, is it is it binding up in the back or is it binding up in the front? I don't know, but I do need to get a jack up, jack out, and get under it and see. The engine runs better than I remember it running. I had an issue with it surging, and it's not nowhere near surging anymore. So. Uh, once once you get it situated, after you get it warmed up, which is awesome, um, feather the choke a little bit and the thing dialed right in. 
let me get under the mower and I'm going to see what I can find when it comes to why this hydrostatic transmission on the right side is being so hard to push. All right, y'all, so I found what may be contributing to the problem. Let me see if I can show you all real quick. Anyways, uh, get the light down here and do my best. So you see this piece right here? It's actually snapped off the back mounting point on this uh, transaxle. So what I believe I'm going to have to do is get, is drill that bad boy out. Get a new shoulder bolt, bolt it in to match this side, it looks like. And that side is just a regular bolt, but it kind of enacts the, uh, I actually don't know what it does, the speed, or it maybe locks it into place. I'm not sure. If it just locks. If it just locks the transaxle into place. Oh, it does just lock the transaxle into place. Hmm. I'm just thinking of things here now, y'all. Let's see. What happens when I pull this back in? I got right next to the muffler. It doesn't do anything when it comes to that. It does lock that into place though. So like, my question is, will it actually, will both sides actually roll like that? Cause it may just be like a, like a park brake lock or something. I'm not sure. Or I put my tripod out. Here we are. Let me drive it just let me see if I've got any sort of action on this uh, on that right hydro. That answers the question, and that's why you let safety switches work. So it's basically stuck, I think. I ain't gonna run it anymore like that. Wow, okay. There you are. So there it is stuck. It is like stuck in gear and I don't know how to do it. I am gonna jack this up. Let me take this um let me take this wheel off and just see what I'm working with. Oh. I'll jack it up, see what we got going on, and uh hopefully we can get this thing kind of sorted out without having to do a lot of major work to this transaxle here. It just seems like I've got like a stuck cable or something. All right guys, so here's where we're at. I got the dash bezel off here. I got, um, it's just like four bolts and three on the bottom. And the whole bezel just comes out. You can see where the 
choke or where the point is of contention here on this arm I lubed everything up but there's like a lot of play in this arm here and so what I've got to do I'm going to take this arm actually off of the mower might be able to do this on the uh, side here might need to get an allen to do it uh, eh, might be able to manage let's see oh it's a half I think this hole is wallowed out over time so let's see if I can get I wonder if this arm just comes right off now. Yeah, kind of. So, I don't know if that hole is wallowed out. If I just need to get a bigger bolt to go in. Not really. I guess it just didn't, just wasn't tight. Spray a little bit of lubricant on here. This is a step that I did not do when I had this originally because I was, you gotta remember, this was the second zero turn I ever worked on and it was also the second year that I had even started doing riding mowers again. You gotta, you know, you, you learn. The more you do, the more you learn. And I'm learning much more now. I'm gonna grab some lubricant and put that back on and see if I, I eliminate the play in this. And if I do, hopefully it'll free up in some areas here so that uh, it's not that hard to, to move and push it forward and backward. Alright guys, so it has been a couple of days. I have purchased a new left front wheel. It's one of those flat free ones. And I figured that this would work out great for what we need it for, for this purpose. And uh, I may need to do a little bit of uh, bushing adjustment and whatnot, but we're gonna get there. Uh, but I couldn't be driving it on that flat, so that was about eighty dollars at Tractor Supply. I could have bought a pair on Amazon, but I don't know if it would have come with the bushings and everything that I needed uh, to transition everything over. That wheel is just fine. I wasn't gonna worry with it. But the main premise is we're going to see the big thing we've got to do before I sell this thing is figure out this charging system situation here it's uh, it's pretty bad um, it's not doing anything uh, or it's it's very very intermittent so I don't know if I have a loose wire or if I have a voltage regulator on the fritz or if I have a coil going out so what I'm going to do because I think it needs it because this is mighty weathered and uh I don't really like the way that it is anyways as I am going to attempt first off on this engine because it's blown up and I can't you know I'm not gonna have any problems if I mess something up on it but this engine right here has one of the um, diode type coil wires on it I know that's not the desirable um, situation when it comes to um, this however we'll see what we got going on I think does it, will this plug work I don't know if this plug will plug in or not so I may be able to steal a plug and a little bit of wiring off of this to make it work I'm not quite sure but um, I might try this first um, and just see how the process goes of taking this off because the engine's trash so I mean what am I going to do anyways and if I can get it off might take that 20 horsepower that has a voltage regulator in the shed there and see what I can do with that but either way I think I'm just going to go ahead and try and nip this in the bud completely and uh just get this to where it's going to uh, charge effectively for us. Again, I, this is a lot of the stuff I've tried to fix here, and it's just 
it's just kind of a little bit of a nightmare when it comes to the wiring situation and uh, so I've just got to I've just got to get this thing figured out to where it'll charge and once I do that then we should have a decent mower all right y'all I've already gotten the coil off of this as you can see this donor engine it has a blown cylinder and uh, it does have a voltage regulator. I have another one that's completely blown, but it doesn't have a voltage regulator on it. So I'm going to try the voltage regulator one first and um, for the coil. And we'll see if that one works for us. So we're going to take the air filter off. And the air filter, and the air filter is in okay shape. I think I beat this one out. I don't think I replaced it proper. And you got a pre-filter. Got a little bit of spider webs in it, but still relatively clean for what it is. And um, now what we've got to do is take this cover off, and we got to take a 5 sixteenths to it and a 10 millimeter. So let me get those tools, and I'll be right with you. All right, y'all. We're gonna take off the 5 sixteenths. To get the shroud off and then we have a couple of halves there to get a cup off for the flywheel uh, for the shroud but we'll take care of that after I take all these three eighths off oh. I think the battery's dying on my impact but I'll show you to save a little bit of time you're going to take three eighths off here, 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 there, and there. And that should get your six bolts out in order to take the shroud off. And then I'll get these half inch ones off. And the next thing you'll see is me taking this off right here. And we'll get at this flywheel um, after that just to get to the coil. And we'll continue on after that. All right, guys. We're at this point now. We've gotten the nut off, or gotten everything off the flywheel cover, like I mentioned. What we're going to do next is take this nut off here. It is a 32 millimeter, and an impact is your best friend when it comes to this. There is a washer on this one too. Flywheel key looks good. That's a good thing. And uh, we've got some corrosion and stuff, so it may be seized on. Hopefully not too bad, but I'll throw a little lubricant on it. And the tricky thing is, oh, let's get this starter off. There we go. So there's some lubricant on it. And now what I'm going to do is find an area to where I can prop up on this, which usually is about right here. Let's find somewhere good and you can give it a couple of whacks. Luckily, this is it's not going to mushroom or bend since it's got this tab on the top. But eventually, like if you can pry it up and give it a few whacks, then you're probably going to be then you're probably going to be good. Now, the one thing I am seeing on this flywheel itself is that it only looks like this magnet is uh, compromised. You can kind of see that there. And if you look over here onto this one, you can kind of see where this magnet is kind of out full here. So I'm wondering if I'm wondering if this magnet is compromised on this flywheel itself because you can kind of see where it was rubbed against something. So I don't know like if I need to actually take this flywheel and replace it with that flywheel over there, which would require me to put a different engine cover on it which isn't a big deal because I've got it here but I might attempt to do that actually 
because I see the damage right here on the magnet. And that way I can eliminate everything when it comes to potential charging issues on this thing. So let me grab, let me get this flywheel to pop off. And uh, once I'm able to do that, I'll rejoin with you and we'll assemble it all back together. Also, it is worth mentioning that I have noticed that somebody did not get these coil plugs correctly. You can see where it's been scraping on the flywheel for some time now. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with it too. Like I said, we're already in this deep. We're going to go ahead and pull it. I just wanted to show you that as well. Um, it's a little bit of a task for me to get this thing off. I might have to get my puller out to see if I can get it to go. But uh, we'll see what I can manage here. Guys, I will say this much. I don't use this very often, mostly because a lot of times I don't run into a flywheel that allows you to bolt in things on the side and then pull it up like that. But I tell you what, it worked out like a charm right here. And that flywheel is now off. So now, what I'm thinking I need to do, I need to make sure that the magnet and the flywheel key are situated in the same spot on this mower as it is uh, that engine. Well, this engine is in that engine. You can see this coil is kind of dirty. It looks, I mean, it looks like it would function okay. This would be a stator, wouldn't it? But like I said, we're going to swap everything out while we're in here. And um, I think we're going to be okay. Coil wire, I mean the coils, which these are, are oh, look like they're pretty good. So let me take... This is just a quarter here. We'll take this off and we'll get all the wires and whatnot. So if you can get a bolt flywheel or a wheel type, bolt type wheel puller set and you have bolts to go off of and you're having a stubborn time like I did with this one, then that's the way to go. Okay, so here, here we go with this. So we can take this off. And then what we need to do now is I've got the wires on this side to take off. You can probably see them about right there. I'm going to tape and tape them. The thing is, this was working intermittently, but it wasn't working fully. So, and I don't fully know why, because there's, we've got some corrosion on that, but there's um, there's two wires going out from this stator to a, um, to this voltage regulator, and the one that I'm going to put on here is only a one wire deal. So I don't know if that is going to cause any problems. That thing's stuck on there. I'll have to cut that wire. But, we'll see. Now we're slowly getting out of there. There we go. That's the only thing we need to do. So you see this coil has two wires coming out of it. I spliced some wires because they weren't long enough. And I don't know, like, if this stator, I keep saying the wrong thing. It's the charging stator. And the one that we're going to put on it, only has this one wire coming out. So I don't know if that, if they tried to adapt or just it was different voltage regulators or something. I do need to get this old one out of here though. This old voltage regulator out of here as well. Which is just a couple of uh, three eighths I think. Yeah. And then the second one's down here. I don't know if I can get them. I can't get that down there. I have to get a wrench on that. But I'll grab, let's take a look. I'll take a look at these flywheels. 
to see where the, um, in relation to the magnet the flywheel key is that's what we've got to figure out if these flywheels will be compatible because if so I'm just gonna like I said switch the whole charging assembly over because of this damage right here that I see on this flywheel it may not be producing enough of a magnetic field all of the time in order to allow for this so let's see flywheel keys right here it's just off to the left of the Briggs logo where this main magnet is let's see what this one is so the main magnet let's take a look Ooh, I'll get that flywheel key in a second all right so let's take a look guys and it looks like we have the same thing here so let's take a look So we have it just off to the left of this main magnet on this one. And just off the left here. So I think we've got a match. So I'll go ahead and put this flywheel on it as well. So y'all saw how I took everything off. I'm going to go ahead and take put, every, put everything back together off camera. Clean this up a little bit. And uh, we'll get... We'll get to going on uh, putting everything back together here. All right, guys, so I got it started and I got it idling. You can see we're at like 14.4 volts, which is great. The voltage regulator's working. I don't know if y'all can see that very well. thing I do want to fix if I can is the surging. You can see it idles down pretty good. It's just like it's starving for fuel at the higher range. Get rid of some trash there. So like I said, we while I'm in there, I'm changing everything. We got the battery charging. That's the biggest thing. Super. Now what I want to do is basically just get this to where it'll run smoothly. I don't know what degree that's going to take, but um, maybe I just need to go out and cut with it some, throw a little bit of sea foam down the tank, and uh, I know the rain might be coming, but maybe I'll be able to, maybe I can get out there and cut a little bit. I do need to top the oil off. The oil is clean, just a little bit low. Um, here's what I did with the voltage regulator setup: is I determined that there was only one charge wire here and it was this one that goes into this connector that comes out. This wire right here didn't go to anything, so I don't know if it was trying to like feed off of something that I didn't know about. But anyways, I put the new voltage regulator on, the, the flywheel from the old, from the engine, the donor engine, which, if y'all looked hard enough, was the exact same number as the flywheel that came off of it. Uh, Gap the coils, put the new stator in. And it uh, seems like we're charging good at like 14 and some change volts, which is excellent. That's the biggest hurdle of this mower. Now what I've got to do is figure out how to get it to run just a little bit better than it is. Um, and uh, we'll be golden after that. Let me work on that a little bit. I might go out and cut with it a little bit to see if I can feather the throttle to make sure that it works good. And... Um, before it storms and I may have to revisit this tomorrow just to clean the car out a little bit to get it run a little bit smoother but pretty much everything's done it's charging good now which is excellent 
All right, guys, we're, I think we're getting really, really close. What I did, I did cut the grass yesterday, and you can see I've got junk and stuff on the footwell of the mower. The handles for the zero-turn hydrostatics, they're, they're working good enough. Um, they're adjusted good enough. The right one's still a little sticky, but I don't think I could fix it any better than I have it. Because you got to remember, this thing is like, I think this thing's like a 99 model if, it's the, if it is the original engine, which makes it close to 20 years old, which kind of fits with the uh, logo system here. Some of y'all may know how to decipher serial numbers here for um, MTDs. But, I was still running into the problem where it would intermittently stop charging for some reason. And then it got to where it was kind of more and more regular. And what I did, long story short, is I kind of whittled it down to this um, connector here for the... Um, power just like the main six pin connector here now uh, I want to make sure that the safety still work and they do because if you bump it it still works so the safeties aren't really impacted but what I did is I think there was some sort of resistance because I kept measuring like 60 ohms of resistance or something in these wires and I don't think there's any sort of resistor in between the um, voltage regulator and the battery so what I did is I just made a nice wire to the battery here and um, we're gonna test this out when I tested it out just with bare wires I was getting 12.8 volts and charging um, which would be enough but what I'm gonna do first off is I did adjust the governor a little bit so all I did I'll show you that while I'm here I'm trying to show you as much as I can but I adjusted this arm a little bit it was already a little bit bent and I worked on it a little bit more but so that the governor comes in kind of late later because I think it was trying to pull the governor in early and that's what was causing the surging issue and way back where is it in the on the bottom here there's a spring right there I don't know how well you can see that but there's a tab on the, the right side of the spring and I pulled that down, pulled that up a little bit to release a little bit of tension. And it seems like it run, it's running a lot better now. It surges maybe for the first 30 seconds as it uh, warms up. But after that, it seems like it's all good, which is nice. Um, let's, uh, I'll crank it up and I'll pull it out and we'll see what we got.
direct wired this thing and it's still not doing the charging that it needs to on the positive terminal. I don't quite get it. I don't know if this because everything is came off of a good mower earlier with like the coils uh well the coils were good already. The flywheel the which means the magnets the stator and then this ignition coil came off of that or this uh, voltage regulator came off of that so I don't know like exactly why Regulators going bad, or another one? Or this thing's frying voltage regulators, or if the way it was wired up earlier was frying voltage regulators. I'm not quite sure, but um, I'm going to investigate it a little bit more. I'd like to get the charging situation solved before I sell this thing. So let me work on it a little bit more and see what I can find. Um, like I said, it was weird because yesterday it worked. It seemed like it worked okay whenever I uh, jumped everything from directly from that voltage regulator. Um, well, I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried. I ended up burning up that other, another coil, or a stator. I keep calling them coils. Trying to figure out a whole situation with, um, when it came to, um, the voltage regulators because the voltage regulators quit i tried one and then i tried another one and that's the one that burned it up i didn't have any more voltage regulators here so what i got this is not ideal i know because i've got an electric pto on it it's one of the old style ones that you have when you uh have an old mechanical blade engage and what it's doing is it'll hold the battery at 12.5 whatever volts fairly easily crank up
ซอร์โลเล่ level off at about 12.56 ish volts whenever it's running with the PTO it'll level out at about 12.4 so it's enough to keep the battery charged adequately I said it'll even out at about 12.56 roughly so it's enough to keep the battery charged adequately but I just have to be careful because I can't get let this battery get too too low and I want to run it for an extended period of time just to see where the situation is with the battery um, because I, it, it has to stay charged either way and I don't have a voltage regulator or a stator that seems to work so I've got this mechanical stator and like I said it will we'll start back up and it will charge <laughs> keep an eye on this and see what it ends up coming to when it comes to finish again as long as it stays at like 12.4 or so and stays stable at that then we'll be okay as you can kind of see it's trying to trying to go down on me a little bit but I'm not running it for an extended period of time right now so that's uh that's probably why. Anyways, that's what that's what I've ended up doing. I'm gonna tape up, tape up a couple things, pull this in the garage, and uh, probably call it for right now because it's been about it's been a few hours that I've been messing around with this thing, and I'm kind of ready to be done with it for today. All right, guys, I just got done doing yet another test mode. I don't know why. I don't know why I had so much difficulty. I actually I do now now that I think about it so so I think that the stator and the um, voltage regulator that originally was on this engine ended up being um, having an issue something with the one of the two I think the voltage regulator ended up being bad and so sorry guys I'm a little bit snotty after I just cut but I tried the voltage regulator and then I put the new stator on and the new voltage regulator and that worked for somewhat of a time and then that burn up actually the voltage regulator did because I can move the wires and then I tried the other voltage regulator and that burnt the stator up so I was like okay let's try because on this mower over here it has a blown up v-twin I was like, okay, well, let's try taking the stator off of this just to experiment because I know y'all don't have to berate me in the comments. I know what it is about these, you know, using a diode setup on an electric PTO. It's not the best, but I wanted to give it a good test to see if it would work. And in my experience so far, Let's take a look at the battery. It's working. Fingers crossed. Now I went and cut for about 15 minutes or so. Obviously it'll charge at about 12.8 to 12.9 volts whenever. Or it'll get the battery up to about 12.9. And then whenever I throw the PT on, PTO on, it will go down the lowest it ever went on me. And I, I mowed for about 15 minutes straight is 12.39 now 12.39 when I started I had about 12.56 volts in the battery it's about 12.56 ish now it's uh, kind of fluctuating because I guess I touched it but I kept this on the entire time And uh, that's interesting because it's doing weird things now. Probably because I changed it a little bit.
There you go, 12.57. We got a good connection. So it's chilling at about 12.57. It'll restart just fine. climbing and charging the only thing this thing won't be good for is like if you did repeated ons and offs with with uh with it running and whatnot i think whoever owns this as long as they run it for a couple of minutes to get to where they need to go and run it for a couple minutes to get it back to where they need to go they're probably going to be just fine with this thing again this is not my preferred fix please spare the comments I already know but this is about the only option that I had left without burning up stators and um, voltage regulators and it seems like it's going to work so y'all have seen this I know I've drawn this out I've probably cut quite a bit because I just it's just not worth it um, for y'all to see so let me give you a rundown when I originally got it back it wasn't charging it was pretty much draining the battery because it wasn't giving any voltage i put a new stator and a different voltage regulator on it which worked for one mo and then the voltage regulator the wires shorted out in it or something i tried to put voltage regulator number one back on it and it fried the stator because they weren't compatible with each other although it was charging at one time and then i went to the diode setup and so this is y'all see it here about 12.55 volts whenever it's sitting here at rest. I'll check it tomorrow before I put it up for sale. And it's charging, it, or it's at about 12.39-ish. That's the lowest it got in, in about 15 minutes of mowing, and it flatlined at 12.39. At 12.39, this thing will crank and run. I wouldn't want it to go much lower than that, but it will crank and run at 12.39. With as much time and effort as I got into it, I think we're good. Some of y'all are going to be like, you need to put a voltage regulator on it. I know. I should. I wanted to experiment to see if this would work, and it seems like it is. So, if anything, the more you know, right? <laughs> Anyways, let's wrap this video up. And, uh call this one done so to speak all right guys that is everything with this mower so just as a recap i originally sold this i got the um got a husqvarna a big husqvarna zero turn in on trade I actually ended up just needing the drive belt to get back going um, a couple other small things like some seat repairs but i got that going got it sold fairly quickly after i got it and uh i got a john deere lx 277 that i ended up uh, it's over at my grand, grandma's house. They are cutting with it. After I basically put deck belts on it. Um, guy had it for a little while. It just said it, he wasn't working out. And uh, I had a yard trailer for sale. He said, if you bring me the yard trailer, I'll let you have the zero turn back. He had bought a newer John Deere D140. And uh, so, this is, this is, came back to me. And, uh, Really the biggest thing I had to figure out number one is the surging. We figured that out That was just a little bit of a governor adjustment and uh, so we got that figured out and that's good The biggest thing was how in the world can I get this thing to charge adequately enough to keep the battery charged and not fry stators and have intermittent voltage regulators uh, issues and uh, I think we got it figured out so this is a kind of a cool experiment um it took a couple of days, but I think we've got a mower that will be nice and reliable. Y'all see, 
I mean, this thing's got a Toro deck on it. Who knows how hard that engine's been run back there. It is a little, I mean, you get this thing in thick grass, it is a little bit, uh, a little weak, but nothing really I can do about uh, that because originally, I think this mower had a, like a 44 inch deck on it. So it's pulling, it's pulling hard labor as it is. But I've successfully cut my grass with it, started it up the next day, Cut some more with it today. I've got it consistently charging the battery now, so what else what else can I really do? This is not the prettiest zero turn in the world. It's probably a sub thousand dollar zero turn that I may or may not already have sold, we'll see. But that's what that's what this is, guys. A lot of experimenting sometimes. And I know that some of y'all are gonna be like, you gotta have a voltage regulator. I know, I should. However, with the evidence that has been presented to me, with uh, working on this, I think this one's going to be good with just that diode setup. It's not, I've had it probably running a good half hour, it's, it hasn't fried the diode or anything along those lines, I think we're going to be alright. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video and this experiment and seeing this zero turn yet again. And um, remember, if you have any questions... Uh, feel free to reach out. You can reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com or, or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. I will catch you all in the next video. See you then.